I read a lot of adventure books and as a girl, none of the books were about me. I decided I still wanted to have all those adventures myself <laughs> and uh, why not? From the high Sierra Nevada mountains to the frozen Antarctic to the steamy Amazon jungle, Susan Trumber's lab is planet Earth. Part adventurer, part detective, part techno wizard, Trumber has crossed all seven continents, tracking the elusive movements of the element fueling climate change. The teacher went around the room and he asked each one of us what we wanted to be. My answer was, I want to be a cosmochemist, you know, <laughs> which was kind of a nerdy answer for a ninth grade girl to give. He looked at me and he said, you're going to be the first woman on Mars. There are lots of things a high school teacher could have said to a child who was so nerdy, <laughs> and, but uh, that was the most encouraging thing I could possibly have heard. Today, the presiding director of the Max Planck Institute for Biogeochemistry captains a world-class facility dedicated to researching what scientists call... The carbon cycle is basically the way we explain how a single carbon atom can move from the atmosphere into the biosphere into living plants and animals and soils and then back out to the atmosphere. When scientists talk about human-induced climate change, carbon, a greenhouse gas, is the culprit. Now in the 1970s, climate scientists knew that the oceans, which cover about 70% of Earth's surface, absorbed carbon naturally, scrubbing it from the air. But at the time, nobody had attempted to research how Earth's land masses absorbed and emitted carbon, meaning roughly 30% of the picture was missing. For most scientists, tracing carbon atoms from the air, through the soils, animals, vegetations, entire ecosystems, seemed too monstrous a task. Trumber saw a globe-trotting adventure. But to document how much carbon the continents were absorbing and storing, she needed a timestamp, something that could reveal when a single atom of carbon clocked into the land. Trumber found the perfect tool in carbon dating. Every day, radiation from space converts stable nitrogen atoms in the atmosphere into radioactive carbon atoms called carbon-14. When plants take in carbon dioxide, carbon-14 hitches a ride into the land. Now, nature produces roughly the same amount of carbon-14 each year, so the amount entering the soil today should be the same amount as a century ago. But... The nuclear age of the 1950s and 60s marks a time when humankind decided to forego its radioactive annuity and opt for a one-time, Geiger-ticking, straight-to-the-atmosphere lump sum of radioactive isotope carbon-14. Everybody exploded their biggest bombs. Most of the carbon-14 came from a couple of the really big explosions just before the test ban treaty. This megadose of carbon-14 spread across the atmosphere and seeped into just about everything everywhere, all at once. Trumbor, an expert with carbon-detecting particle accelerators, had her timestamp. Trumber traced carbon-14 through leaves, root systems, and into soils, painting an unprecedented and complex picture of carbon absorption across the continents. Ultimately, the girl who dreamt of adventure and found it in carbon has another message. I think the one thing that unites us as human beings is we're all scientists when we're kids, right? We're all curious about our world, and I think just keeping that spirit alive somehow, if we can discover a way to keep that, then I think the human race is in good shape. Ha, ha, ha.